Behold the chicken. It's a beautiful animal. Its beauty doesn't come from its hair or smile, since it doesn't have either fur or teeth, but from its beautiful feathers. Notice how the different parts of the animal have different types of feathers. Short feathers on its thighs, long primary feathers on its wings, and even longer tail feathers. Notice the feet have no feathers, but have scales instead. As developmental biologists, you should be asking where those feathers and scales come from, and how so many different types of skin derivatives are created. Today we are going to discuss the development of these structures, using experiments about feather formation to learn about one of the principal mechanisms by which a developing cell learns its fate, a process called induction. You all know that the skin is composed of two layers, an inner dermis derived from mesoderm, and an outer layer, the epidermis, that is derived from ectoderm. In the first experiments we'll discuss, embryologists took mesoderm and ectoderm from the wing and grew them without each other. No feather forms. But what do you think happened when they grew them together? Yep, you guessed it, a feather formed. Working in small groups, answer the following questions. What conclusions can you make from this result? What question would you like to ask next? What experiment could you do to ask it? Then answer this clicker question. In our next experiment, ectoderm and mesoderm are again combined, but this time one of the tissues is not from a feather-forming region. The ectoderm in one recombinant and the mesoderm in the other. Only when the mesoderm is from a feather-forming region does a feather form. Again, work in small groups. What conclusions can you make from this result? Then answer this clicker question. Does this result mean that the type of ectoderm doesn't matter? Let's take an experiment in which an older or younger ectoderm is used. When it is recombined with the mesoderm used in the previous experiments, it doesn't make a feather. Go back to your small groups. First, explain why this combination doesn't make a feather. Then use the following terms to describe the results of the experiments we have covered so far. Induction, the process of sending a signal from one cell or tissue type to another that alters the fate of the responding cell or tissue. Inducer, a signal capable of altering cell fate. Competence, the ability of a cell or tissue to respond to the signal. Now for our next experiment. Let's analyze why the different feather types in the chicken form. What is different about the wing that wing feathers should form there and not on the leg or tail and vice versa? What experiment would you do? Right, another recombination experiment. When they took the same wing ectoderm we've been using in previous experiments, but now combined it with leg mesoderm, they got a leg feather, not a wing feather. They did another experiment where they took the mesoderm from the foot. What do you think formed? Right, a scale. Group work again. What does this experiment tell us about the induction of feathers and scales? Here's another clicker question to answer. Now I want to tell you about a couple of experiments that seem a little wild. What do you think happens when they combine the mesoderm from a chick wing with the ectoderm of a mouse? The ectoderm formed a hair. Once again, back to your groups. What does this experiment tell us about hair induction? What does it tell us about competence? Now for another strange experiment. They combined the jaw mesoderm of a mouse with the ectoderm of a chick. What do you think happened? How many of you think that nothing happened because the chick ectoderm has no competence for a tooth inducer? How many think that the chick ectoderm was able to respond to the inducer but was only able to make a scale or feather? And how many think that the chick actually made a tooth? Well, here you have it, rare as a hen's tooth. Since this work was done, a mutation in chicken that gives rise to teeth-like structures has been found. There have also been some Jurassic Park discussions, because really, add some teeth to a bird and you have a little dinosaur. So to end this lesson, I want you to do two things. Take five minutes and write a summary of what you have learned in today's class. What questions do you have that remain unanswered? Finally, go back to your groups again and create a description of inducers. After making your list, think back to our discussions on the molecules important in development. What category of molecules do you think might be involved? Remember that we'll start next time talking about the questions these experiments provoke. Be ready to propose the next experiments.